Now, one of the most beautiful ways to confirm this hypothesis that the arrival of electrons is uh, described by a distribution that looks just like what we would calculate for light using methods from 2214 or 2218 is a famous experiment called the G.P. Thompson experiment. And this experiment, from a historical point of view, is also very interesting. It was the same year as the Davis and Germer experiment. So people were really interested in whether we can calculate probabilities using uh, these type of uh, uh, 2214 type of ideas uh, for electrons. And the other interesting historical uh, bit about this is that G.P. Thompson was actually the son of J.J. Thompson. Remember J.J. Thompson and his experiments on the CRT tube, right? Those experiments really showed classical behavior for the electron. And now we're going to see this new microscopic behavior verified in a beautiful experiment. So the way he did this experiment, super clever, is he took a beam of electrons, right? And these electrons had a certain momentum P. And so our hypothesis then is that we're going to get... Uh, their arrivals described by a interference pattern a la 2214 or 2218 with a wavelength equal exactly to H over P. He then sent these electrons in to, a, to hit a target again. And once again, the target is going to be a thin foil. Um, it's a thin foil target. And uh, one experimental detail that will come up a little bit later on, not critical for the analysis, but it's still um, important, is that it, it was a polycrystal. So what that means is it's actually made out of a lot of little crystals that all have all different random orientations here inside. And then, of course, you know, you can think about electrons might go straight through, but of course they are going to be scattered at various different angles. And to record where they land, he uh, sent these all towards a uh, photo plate again, and then um, they recorded where they would arrive. Because it turns out that um, the electrons, just like photons, can break the chemical bonds in those silver halide crystals and, in fact, uh, create spots where they land. Now, the second piece of the experiment, super clever, super controlled experiment, is he would then take a beam of x-rays, like so, and with x-rays, you can, these are light, so this is going to obey standard 2214, 2218 uh, interference patterns. He then took a beam of x-rays, and the thing with the x-rays is he was very careful to make sure to choose exactly wavelength, uh, x-rays of exactly the same wavelength that uh, appeared for the electrons in his electron experiment. And then he sent those x-rays onto a thin foil target, but to keep this perfectly controlled, he uses the same target. All right, so same wavelength, but now it's light, hitting the same target, and once again, he's uh, directing these towards a uh, photo plate, so he can record, a la, you know, a G.I. Taylor, uh, exactly where each of these individual photon events are going to arrive. And then for, to display the results, it was a really beautiful experiment, very nice showmanship, and there's some beautiful pictures in French and Taylor of his results. So what he did is he did this with a double exposure. So he... Um, put some protecting thing on his photographic plate uh, to block, for instance, the electrons uh, when he's doing um, for just half the plate. And then when he did it in the x-ray, he blocked the other half of the plate. So he got both experiments on one plate, where on one side you can see the uh, pattern of arrival for the electrons, and then the other side you can see the pattern of arrival for the x-rays. Now, for the x-rays, right, the scattering, uh, definitely produces certain preferred angles just through standard, you know, uh, uh, wave interference uh, calculation. You can predict what those are. But now because the plate is made out of lots of little polycrystals, right, or where each crystal has its own different orientation, what you get is you don't get just um, one particular direction, but you get these uh, little crystals. They appear with all different rotations inside the foil. So scattering at this angle actually becomes scattering into a cone as you have all of these different rotations inside the crystal. So what you actually see, instead of very specific locations where they land, you see these uh, circles on your photographic plate. 
and those circles have a certain pattern and the radii of those circles tell you then the angle uh, preferred angles for diffraction and there's a special pattern that has to do with the crystal structure sometimes you'll have two of these rings that are near each other then you might have a larger separation maybe the next one has an even larger separation out after that now the beauty of this is when you and this is I should say just like a TI Taylor a GI Taylor experiment so this has to occur by discrete random arrivals right but they eventually are controlled by a probability distribution so at the end of the day you build up the uh, expected brightness pattern for the interference from this type of a crystal on the electron side what you see on the plate is actually exactly the same pattern of rings right coming out of so we have exactly the same interference pattern coming from exactly the same sample and that's a beautiful demonstration of the fact that the arrival of these electrons follows all exactly the same rules as the arrival of light in a um, interference experiment so that leads us to a very powerful result in hypothesis and the basic idea of this hypothesis is that the electrons microscopically right are acting just like the photons are like the photons which is a partial explanation maybe of why right we have the same Planck's constant for both of them but it's still mysterious why for one of them Planck's is linking wavelength and momentum and the other one it's linking uh, energy and frequency but the hypothesis is going to be this is that the arrival of electrons are discrete events and we already knew these were discrete right we never see a fraction of an electron we already knew this from Millikan but it's nice to see that it lines up with exactly the same behavior as we do for the photons but because they are arriving discreetly those arrivals are discrete and they must be occurring at and you can verify this through more detailed experiments by looking at the counting statistics on where the electrons arrive but they are arriving at truly random locations X right and uh, but it's not chaos they arrive with a fixed probability distribution P of X and as you can see right in this picture that probability distribution is directly proportional to the brightness of X we would calculate right I'm not saying that, that the electrons are light right I'm just saying that we get exactly the same pattern and that's directly confirmed experimentally here we know how to calculate that pattern we would calculate using uh, physics uh, again uh, 2214 your standard wave physics or the honors version 2218 four waves of a particular wavelength lambda equals h over p that then is the conclusion we can draw from this famous experiment on uh, the behavior of the electrons